Well, welcome back to another edition of 42nd Street Pete's Grindhouse. Um, in the 80s, the end of the 80s, uh, there was a, still a couple films being shot on 42nd Street and around Times Square area. One of them was uh, Fulci's uh, New York City Ripper, which was uh, used some New York locations. But one of the crazier ones was this one, The Exterminator by James Glickenhaus. Um, I'm trying to think the year in this one. Damn, doesn't give the year. Had to be like around 81 or something like that. But anyway, this film opens up in Vietnam, and there's three POWs. One gets their head fucking cut off, uh, courtesy of early special effects works by Stan Winston. And the two POWs are Steve James and Robert Ginty, who survive Vietnam, go back, they're working on a loading dock, looks like around the meatpacking district, uh, down around 14th Street or something like that, I could be wrong, maybe it's in Brooklyn, but anyway, uh, a gang starts ripping off, uh, I guess a beer truck or something, um, Ginty's character uh, surprises them, they pull a knife on him, Steve James sneaks up, gets the drop on him, they beat the shit out of the three of them, and drag them off. Well, Steve James is, is cutting through a, a lot to go play pool with uh, Robert Ginty's character, John, when he's attacked by the gang. The chain's wrapped around his neck, and the leader of the gang takes a fucking gardening claw and shoves it in his back and rips his spine. So now he's in the hospital on a respirator, paralyzed. He can still move his eyes. He still knows what's going on. But John wants revenge for him. So he captures one of this gang called the Ghetto Ghouls, starts tormenting him with a flamethrower, as we see a flamethrower on here. That is the only time in this film this little mini flamethrower is even used, and it wasn't even used to a certain extent. Um, he finds out where the clubhouse is, goes back, throws all the girls out of the clubhouse. One guy tries to jump him. He's got an AK-47, AK which he blows the guy away. He butt-strokes this other heavyset guy, who's actually Erwin Keyes, and... Um, the leader just starts screaming, at him, ah, we, didn't, we didn't hurt you, what do you care about the other guy? He's just an uh, insert N-word, and then he gets butt-stroked. Uh, John drags him to the basement of this tenement, ties them up, gags them, and leaves them on the ground where the rats are scurrying around. So then this detective, Christopher George, shows up to find out that the ghetto ghouls, one of them still alive, but half his face is eaten off. And that sets the tone. So it's more like non-stop action violence with shots of 42nd Street interspersed. At one point, John's walking down. Um, if you were standing facing up, it would be the left side of the block, and you see him past the Lyric Theater. You see the displays in the window. You see the marquee for the harem and all that other stuff. Then he goes up the other side of the street where you see basically uh, the Liberty um, and other, other theater fronts. You never see the actual marquees except for the harem. Um, he also goes into... Uh, this mob guy who basically is ripping off the company he works for by taking the skim and puts him through a meat grinder when the guy sends him over to his house and forgets to tell him that he has an attack dog. So a mobster is dropped into a meat grinder and turned into hamburger. Uh, another one is that this pimp tortures this girl with a soldering iron and John finds her, finds out the location of where this guy is, goes back, and this is where he actually does set somebody on fire. He ties the guy to a mattress soaks him with lighter fluid and throws a book of matches at him, and then shoots this other pervert in the groin, who actually is a state senator from New Jersey. So then there's a few more killings, but now the CIA, for some reason, wants to get involved because it's an election year and we can't have this. So they hire a guy to basically to take out the exterminator. And Christopher George's character, the detective, will not cooperate with this guy because he knows he's a prick. So what happens is, they trace, uh, John has to go in and basically pull the plug on his buddy because his buddy asks for him to pull the plug by doing some eye gestures. Um, Christopher George figures out who it is, stakes out his apartment, and they set up a meet. Well, the meet is overheard by the CIA guy who snipes, and Christopher George is killed, and John is also shot and flies off the top of the building into the river, but John was wearing a flak vest and survived and walked out of the river, leaving it wide open for a sequel that totally, utterly sucked The Exterminator 2 with a mobilized garbage truck, Mario Van Peebles, and a cast of, I don't know, real, it, 
really looked weird, and I, from what I understand, Ginty wasn't really happy with the end result of it, and pretty much disowned it. Um, this is the Arrow version of the Exterminator, and this runs a brisk 98 minutes, as opposed to a 94-minute cut, which is missing some gore, and the Synapse cut, which basically put back in the gore, but also put in a shitload of this romantic subplot between Christopher George and Samantha Egger, which basically makes the fucking thing at times look like an after-school movie. Um, why they did that, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, 98 minutes is a great running time for a grindhouse film. And this, like I said, this has all the gore in it and all the action. Uh, the Synapse one, I cannot recommend because I said they, they actually cleaned it up and made it too clean. And I forget who I was watching it with at one point. We looked at each other and said, wow, this is really creepy and we never have to see this version of the film again, which I never did. I sold that one off because the one that they had put out, I believe it was either on Anchor Bay or Elite or something like that, is a lot better. But nothing can top this one. It has the interview with uh, James Glickenhaus and also has 42nd Street Then and Now, a tour of the Sleaze Circuit with director Frank Henenlotter, who looks totally disgusted, as I was, to be out on this clean street that used to be so nasty and so scuzzy and so wonderful to hang out on. So that's our show for today. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for tuning in. Above all, stay safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.